All right, everybody, let's talk about antivirals. Um, now, in this talk, I am going to primarily just talk about the different drugs and what we use them for and the adverse effects. I am not going to go into treatment protocols or anything like that. So I do have videos for each of these um, processes, each of these diseases. So you can go back and watch that if you want. But we're really going to be focusing on the drugs here. Now, if you're taking step one, I am not going to spend too much time talking about mechanisms. This is a step two and step three talk where I focus on the drugs and what we use them for and the adverse effects. Step three in particular likes to test you about adverse effects. Um, so um, you'll want to be aware of them. Fortunately, a lot of these uh, antivirals are pretty clean. They're a lot better than the antibacterials, uh, for instance. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or clicking on the I button on the upper right hand corner. It'll drag you down to a link. Uh, I really appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button and you will get notifications every time I put a new video up. Okay, so this looks like a lot. Um, however, I promise you it will go fairly quickly. Um, so we're going to talk about these different um, antivirals that are used for different uh, diseases. Now, fortunately, um, unlike the antibacterials, uh, these antivirals, they most of them primarily only have one purpose. Um, so you can remember them to the disease. That is nice because unlike, you know, vancomycin, which you can use for a gazillion different things, or doxycycline, which you can use for a gazillion different things, you're really only using, for instance, um, potophyllin for one thing. You're only using remdesivir for one thing. You're only using, uh, acyclovir or, uh, emtricitabine for one thing. Okay, so uh, we'll go into that. I want you to remember the names of these drugs, what they correspond to, and the adverse effects. So influenza. We all know what the flu is. It is a systemic disorder caused by a virus. It primarily involves the upper respiratory tract. You know your flu-like symptoms. To diagnose this, you get a rapid check. Uh, however, if the patient has meningeal signs, make sure and get a lumbar puncture, but make sure first that they don't have any focal signs because then we need to do a CT first. Now, the reason that I tell you this diagnostic step, and I said I'm not going to talk about diagnostics here, is because you cannot give medications for influenza. It would be useless to give medications for influenza if they've had these symptoms for more than a couple days. Um, so if, if the symptoms came on, less than 48 hours ago, then you can absolutely give antivirals. Um, otherwise, it's supportive care. So the drugs that we give for influenza are oseltamivir and zanamivir. Um, now, uh, the adverse effects are pretty sparse. However, zanamivir, because it's an inhaled compound, uh, it can cause bronchospasm, but that's pretty rare. And these are both neuraminidase inhibitors. Now, we don't really use amantadine anymore to, for treating the flu just because there's widespread resistance. So the way I remember this is that there, first of all, it ends in vir, so you know it's an antiviral, and then it has I before it, I for influenza. Now, these mnemonics, I'm going to tell you, they're not perfect, but they help. Okay, what about herpes infection? So I'm not just talking about genital herpes here. I'm talking about all the herpes viruses. Uh, so acyclovir can be used to treat varicella zoster and herpes zoster, uh, but it is not used for CMV. That's important to know. That may come up as a wrong answer choice. You've got a patient with CMV retinitis, what do we use to treat? And it's not acyclovir. Uh, this can have nephrotoxicity if you're giving it IV, Fortunately, we generally don't. Valacyclovir is a prodrug of acyclovir, so it's got better oral bioavailability. And the nice thing about that is that um, we're not giving it IV, so you're not really going to have any real significant adverse effects here. Gancyclovir is the drug of choice for CMV infections, and it's also used for CMV prophylaxis in AIDS patients. 
Now, ganciclovir is a little bit more evil. It can cause pancytopenia, so you got to watch out for that. If you've got a patient who's on long-term CMV prophylaxis, if they got AIDS, for instance, uh, you want to make sure you're getting routine CBC, which you're going to be doing because you want to check a CD4 count anyway, uh, but this is really important here. So any of the cell lines can be disturbed. Valganciclovir, similar to valaciclovir, uh, it's just an oral form, better bioavailability. So this is going to have a similar adverse effect profile. Foscarnet has got a really wide spectrum of activity. However, it has more adverse effects, nephrotoxicity, electrolyte disturbances. We only use this in an inpatient setting. This is for CMV infections that are resistant to ganciclovir or it's just not working. Uh, the mechanism of action for aciclovir and ganciclovir is that they inhibit uh, DNA synthesis. So basically, they're like fake um, nucleotides, uh, but you can't add another nucleotide onto that, so it terminates the chain. Now, in order for aciclovir and ganciclovir to work, they have to be activated by viral thymidine kinase. Um, and the nice thing about that is that if those drugs got into your own cell, you don't have that thymidine kinase to activate it. Um, so it's not going to affect your cells. If, if it did, then it would be like a chemotherapy drug, right? Uh, but it doesn't. It only works in uh, the virus. Uh, so that is nice. The problem is thymidine kinase can mutate um, and then you can get resistance. Foscarnet does not need to be activated by thymidine kinase. So that's why we use it for uh, viruses that have become resistant or that um, are not responding to um, acyclovir or ganciclovir. Now, the way I remember this is, oh crap, I got herpes. <laughs> so ovir, ovir. Now, the HIV AIDS medications, um, I go into this in their own talk, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. There are four classes. There are there, are, there is another one, um, fusion inhibitors, uh, but uh, I'm not going to go into that. So, Miraviroc and Infirvitide. Um, NRTIs are the oldest. Zidovidine is the most famous. These inhibit re reverse transcriptase competitively. The NNRTIs, these are non-competitive inhibitors of reverse transcriptase. The way I remember this is that they all have the word vir in the middle, okay? Now, you see vir here, uh, but it's at the end. So they all vir in the middle, okay? The protease inhibitors, um, are uh, they all end in navir. And the way this works, it prevents cleavage of a big polyprotein that needs to be cleaved into their substituent proteins um, and so if you can't do that, then you can't create a mature HIV virion, and so this prevents viral maturation. Integrase inhibitors all have Tegra in the middle, and the protease inhibitors all end in Navir, right? Integrase inhibitors all have Tegra in the middle, so Dalutegravir, Raltegravir, Elvitegravir. Um, these inhibit integrase, which is responsible for inserting the HIV genome into the host genome. Um, so if it doesn't do that, there's no replication. Heart is the regimen of therapy that we use for treating patients with HIV. Generally, we go with two NRTIs and an integrase inhibitor, but there are multiple regimens that you can go with. HPV infections, uh, there's really two. Um, so this would be things like uh, HPV, warts, molluscum contagiosum. Um, you can do cryotherapy and other surgical regimens, but medical therapy is really nice for those who are a little skittish about going under a needle. So a miquimod and podophyllin. Adverse effects are fairly, you know, because these are topical, um, they're, they're limited really to dermatitis and maybe allergic reactions, but uh, local reactions. Uh, but they're pretty rare. These are pretty clean drugs. Okay, hep B infection. So it's worth remembering that hep B uses reverse transcriptase. It is a para-retrovirus, not a full retrovirus. Uh, but the, the cool thing is here, we see a lot of the same uh, drugs that we use as NRTIs in, uh, for HIV infection. So tenofovir, adefovir, lamivudine. Um, so you don't even need to remember the uh, any new adverse effects. And these are also fairly clean drugs. Um, so... Um, these first three are also used in HIV, and Tecavir, however, is not. It's only used in Hep B. All right, now these Hep C drugs, um, these are fairly new, and you do not need to know how these work 
at all. Okay, do not worry about the mechanism. I included it here to help you. Um, but the nice thing about these drugs is that they all end in Previr, Asvir, or Buvir. And if you know that, you are good to go. The important thing on the step is to be able to identify this, okay? Identify, oh, that drug is used for hep C. And as far as I know, none of these drugs are used for anything else. All right, so uh, we have gluc glucaprevir, semeprevir, um, and then I'm not going to talk about all these, but uh, I will point out uh, cefospivir is probably the one you're going to see most often. Now, these drugs are usually taken in combination, so you'll probably see that on your exam. The nice thing about hep C treatment is that there's no one best choice because before we decide which drug regimen to use for hep C, uh, we do genotyping. So you will not be expected to choose one or the other. However, you may get um, a list of answers and a bunch of them are hep B drugs like tenofovir and, and, and tecovir. And then you'll have these hep C drugs as one, the correct answer choice. And you'll need to know that. And usually, again, it's a combination um, is what we do. Um, so um, Another thing I want you to remember is that hep C, we treat immediately. And I have a video on viral hepatitis, so please go back and watch that if you have not. And then finally, COVID-19. Obviously, this is new. I did my uh, first video that I'm revising um, 10 years ago, so long before COVID. The only drug that is approved by the FDA for the treatment of COVID is remdesivir. And this blocks an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, which is common in RNA viruses. Uh, but uh, this is really primarily used to treat COVID. Um, it has been experimented for things like Ebola, uh, but this is a COVID drug. Uh, the adverse effects, they're pretty rare, but they do exist. Renal and liver dysfunction, electrolyte derangements, particularly potassium, and infusion reactions. So um, otherwise, it's, it's, it's not a bad drug. It's commonly given um, both for prophylaxis and for post-exposure prophylaxis and for treatment. So um, expect to run into this in the hospital if you're dealing with COVID patients.